Welcome to episode 22 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I will show you how I remove backgrounds to create images with transparent backgrounds using Comfy UI and a few tricks in Photoshop. Open Comfy UI and go to the manager, then select Custom Nodes Manager. Search for Inspired Net with a Y created by this author. The node name is Comfy UI Inspire Net Rem BG. Click Install, wait for it to finish installing, then click Restart and OK. After restarting, a new Comfy UI window will open. The workflow is quite simple. First, double click on the canvas, search for a load image node, and add it to the canvas. Then, click the Choose File button and upload the image you want to remove the background from. I will open this portrait of a woman. Next, search for the Inspire Net node that we just installed. There are two versions, but I will choose the simple one that doesn't have advanced in the name. We connect the image input and output. Then on the image output, we add a save image node. That's the entire workflow. When we press the Q button, it will run the workflow, but the first time it runs slower, so let it finish. It took about two minutes on my PC. Once it's finished, we get the final PNG image without the background. As you can see, it did a good job removing the background. Now, besides saving the transparent background image, we can also save the mask. So draw a connection from the mask and search for convert mask to image. Add that node and then add another save image node. Now, when I run the workflow, you'll see it's quite fast. It only takes about three seconds to remove the background. And now we also have the mask as an image. I can change the prefix of the image so it's easier to organize labeling the first one image and the second one mask. If we look in the output folder, you'll see that the first time it had comfy UI in the name, but now after I changed the prefix, it's easier to identify each image. Let me try a few more examples like this flower. The results are quite nice. It even detected the small holes between the petals. Here's another example with a robot. And again, the mask is quite clean. Um, there are some areas that could be improved, and we can do that in Photoshop, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's try a cat. As you can see, when there's a good separation between the subject and background, the uh, results are usually great. You can see how nicely it masked the fur. For the night, again, I got a nice uh, clean mask. There, There's a tiny hole here because the color was similar to the background probably, but I'm not sure if it should be there. So you know, in normal situations, most of the time, the results are good, but no AI is perfect and it can't work in every situation. Let me show you one of those examples. For instance, let me load this image of a building. Here, we don't have a well-defined background, just the main subject, which is the building. It tried to separate the building from the background there's a more advanced node that lets you make small adjustments. We can search for Inspire again and choose the advanced version. Then we reconnect the node so it looks just like before, but with the new node. This one has a threshold value currently set to 50%. If I run it now, it's balanced, similar to the previous node. But if I start changing the value, you'll start to see some changes. See, now it has more area covered by the building. If I reduce the value even more, it will cover even more area. But if I increase the value, it will cover less of the building. So it offers slight adjustments, but not much. I'll leave it at the default value and show you other options you can use with Photoshop. Let's open the original image in Photoshop, or you can copy and paste it. Photoshop also has a remove background option. But in this case, as you can see, it didn't detect a background to remove. The problem isn't with the AI, it's just that the image is too complex for Photoshop to identify the background. Now let me show you how useful that mask is. I'll copy the mask and paste it on top, or you can just open the mask from the output folder and drag it onto the top layer. Then open the channels window. Here you have different color channels. If I press the control key while hovering over the thumbnail, you'll see the cursor change. If I press control and click on the thumbnail, it will load a selection from that image. As you can see, the selection is now active. Now I'm going back to the layers panel and hiding that mask. Then I select the original image and click on the mask icon. That will apply the mask with that selection. 
Now we have what ComfyUI did, the original image with a mask. You can now use a brush, maybe a hard brush, and use black or white to paint over areas to hide or reveal from the mask. If I paint with white, I'll show more of the image. So you can paint the areas you want to be visible, and if I switch to black, I can hide parts of the image that I don't want to see or want to be transparent. You have full control over how your mask looks, but this is for extreme situations when the AI doesn't work exactly how you want. I have this white background that I can remove, and uh, you can see the transparency grid behind. You can click on the mask to see how you painted it. You can also use uh, gray colors to make semi-transparent see-through areas. If you right-click on a mask, you can apply it. Now you can save that image as a transparent PNG, or you can go to the image menu and choose trim. I use these settings, then click OK. Uh, that will resize the document to the size of the visible subject, so you don't have all that extra transparent space. Then you can save it as a PNG. Let's try another example, like this portrait of a woman. It removed the background quite nicely, but there are still some areas that can be improved. Let's open the original image in Photoshop and repeat the steps to add the mask. It doesn't take long to apply a mask, as you can see. You can even record an action to do all those steps for you. With the mask selected, we can remove some of the hairs that look disconnected by using a black brush. Let me add a solid background under the image to check something. Sometimes you might see a white or black glow around the image. Let me apply the mask and show you how, in some cases, you can make a slight improvement. Go to Layer Matting and choose Defringe. See how it removed about one pixel around the edges and improved the image slightly. Maybe this isn't the best example, but I'll show you a version where the difference is more visible. Sometimes you can use Remove Black Matte or Remove White Matte, depending on the color of the outline around the image but most of the time I use defringe. Let's see how good Photoshop is at removing backgrounds when the background is visible, like in this case. If I click remove background, you'll see that it did a great job. If I hide the background, you can see how clean the transparency is. I often test with a red background to check for any white or black edges, and in this case, it has a nice blur that helps it blend. Photoshop did a really nice job. Let me select the image again. In the latest Photoshop, we now have the Generate Background feature. Basically, you click one button to remove the background and another button to generate a new background after. So let's generate a background. I'll add a prompt for a street at sunset and click Generate. Wait for it to finish, and this is the result. I got better results than I expected. Usually you get three versions, but you can generate more. I'm really impressed with this one. But as you remember, there's no perfect AI that works all the time, which is why it's better to use multiple tools in your workflow. I have these illustrations, and with Comfy UI, I get a nice separation from the background. As you can see, it worked quite well. Now let me open that image in Photoshop and try the Remove Background option again. And it failed. As you can see, it didn't remove all the background from certain areas. So in this particular case, Comfy UI did a better job at removing the background than Photoshop. There are still some floating bits in the air that we can remove. I can copy the mask and replace the existing mask in Photoshop. This time, I'll alt-click on the mask to show only the mask and paste the mask I copied from Comfy UI with Control plus V. Then I'll alt-click again to reveal the image. Now we've successfully replaced the mask and we can use a black brush to remove the unwanted parts from the image. I have open here a Flux Dev workflow with styles from episode 10. I will select a style, like a fantasy game item. Then for the prompt, I'll use a magic potion bottle on a solid black background. Notice how I mentioned that I want a solid color background because it will make it easier to remove the background later. Um, it can be any color, but I usually choose a color similar to the, the background I want to place the image on top of. So I got this nice potion bottle. I will change the prefix so we can find it more easily later in the output folder. Then I will add the Inspire Net node. As you can see, it's connected to the same decode node. And from here, we add another save image node. I'll change the prefix of this one as well so we know it's the one with the transparent background. Then I'll add the Convert Mass to Image node and we add the save image node again, changing the prefix. 
As you can see, it's quite easy to add the remove background option to any workflow. I'll run the workflow again, and now it saves three images. The original one, the one with the transparent background, and one for the mask. This can save a lot of time when you're working with clip art, game items, or designs that need a transparent background. Since I generated multiple images here, the numbers are not the same for each one, so it might be harder to know which mask belongs to which image. But if you save them in a different folder, or if the folder is empty, for example, if I delete all the images and try to generate again with a different seed, you'll see that I get three images with the same number, making it easy to match the mask to the image. Now, because I generated the image with a black background, it will look great on a dark background. But on a transparent background or a white background, you might see a one pixel contour around the image that we talked about earlier. We can remove that uh, with Defringe so it looks good on light backgrounds as well. However, if I plan to use it on a light background, I can use that color in the prompt for the background to match better. So I can put white in the prompt and uh, get this bottle. And as you can see, it looks great on a white background. But when I change the background to black, um, I see that pixel edge again. Now I can try either using remove white mat or undo and try the defringe option to see what works better. Thank you all for helping this YouTube channel grow. A special thanks to the legends and VIPs, as well as everyone who's active on Discord, growing our community. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment. Thank you so much. Have a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.